All right, so this is the lab for uh, the assembly programming class, and today's topic is going to be how to deal, how to use a GNU debugger. All right, so what is a GNU debugger? If we go to the resources section of our web page, we can see that GDB, or GNU debugger, has a bunch of uh, resources there where you can read the manual, you can uh, look at some commands, a short version of the commands, there are a couple tutorials available there. But I also have included a very short example of how to use it for our class uh, and, and a very short list of the essential commands that you can use with the GNU debugger. So the GNU debugger is a tool that allows us to run our program, to uh, monitor the variables, the data, uh, to, to run it step by step, uh, to, uh, actually to see what it is doing to focus onto certain aspects of our program so that we can actually fix the bugs if there are any bugs in the program. All right? So that's the purpose. So let's start out in the world of C. I have a C program, simple C. Uh, what does it do? So it's basically a simple function. Uh, there's this main function, what it does, it has two variables, i and, and result, for res, res, and it is calling a my function, which is defined up above here, uh, and the my function, essentially what it does in a very convoluted way, way, it is adding two numbers. It's adding the parameter to itself, and that's what it's returning. I have broken it down in several lines here so that we can actually follow it using the debugger how it's happening, right? In a real program, you would probably not do it in, in such a slow way, right? So once once it's there, it's printing the result, uh, and then it's printing that it's done. Again, there are two lines of code. Uh, we're gonna be able to step through those using the debugger, debugger. All right, so that's the program. In order to compile that program so that we can execute, right now we don't have a compiled code. Uh, we can do GCC. I'm going to add a switch minus G, meaning that we're going to use the GNU debugger. Uh, and we want to compile uh, simple C. And I'm going to create uh, the output file is going to be simple. All right. Once I do that, well, surprise, surprise, there are no error messages because I have debugged it earlier. At least it does compile. Does it do what it's expected to do? We'll see. So if I look at the uh, directory, I have the program here. Let's try to run it. Okay. Uh, simple. If I run it, it says that the parameter i is 7, and then the result is 14, which, which seems right to me. Okay. But nevertheless, let's try to run it. Let's try to look into the code using and run it step by step using GNU debugger. So there's this command gdb gnu debugger and I can say simple and I press enter. So what happens, the gnu debugger starts, it loads a simple program, it's reading symbols from simple, uh, meaning that if there is, if there are any variables, any functions, it's reading the symbolic names for them as well if it was compiled using the minus G option, the debug option, so that it can present the data better to us. So a simple thing that we can do, we can just run the program. And it starts the program, it runs, it prints the result, and it says that, that the program has exited normally. All right? So it pretty much prints whatever we saw before. So no, there's no real benefit doing it this way yet. Okay. With one exception, if the program would have crashed, then it would have stopped at that place where it crashed, and we would have been able to 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 um, explore the variables or where did it crash, what is the call stack, and things like that. All right, um, and we can run it again, and it will run it again. Okay, and when we're done, we can just quit the debugger, and we are out of it. Right. Now, sometimes 
you may get anno annoyed by all of those messages at the beginning so we can use a quiet mode minus q then we just see that uh, debugger has started it has read the symbols and it's ready to do our bidding so what is our bidding what should we do uh, let's let's run it step by step okay uh, if I say or before that we can actually list the contents of a program okay uh, if I'm saying list then it's going to show me the program right so and it's going to show me the 10 lines of the program if I press enter then it's going to show me the next 10 lines and so on all right so we can see that we have my function we have main so I figure out it figured out we are using the simple program and that's that's why it's showing us this so the real programs may have thousands of lines thousands of files how do we specify what exactly do we want to see right so for that we can list we can list let's say main by function name and it's gonna find where the function is it's gonna show us the function main all right or we can have list uh, uh, my function my function that's one function that we have in this code then it's it's jumping to the my function and it's showing us the my function code it's showing us a little bit before as well and a little bit after which might be convenient for us right so this might be convenient because we may want to set up breakpoints so these are like the stop signs for for where our program should stop when we run it okay so we can do break let's break at the line five okay this line where we have int a right break five and it has set the breakpoint in fact it has set it at line six and the reason being is that line five actually has no executable code it just defines a variable right it really does something uh, essential on the next line. So that's why there are breakpoints. We can set more breakpoints. We can set breakpoint at the line 13 uh, in the main function. So let's do that. Break 13. So it did set another breakpoint. What we could ask, we could ask for the information about breakpoints. We could ask uh, to show uh, breakpoints. Um, or info info breakpoints and then it tells us where the breakpoints are so we have two breakpoints one and two uh, at my function on the line six and at main on the line 13 so these breakpoints they may be on different files on different lines different functions as you please multiple breakpoints we can also delete breakpoints so i could say delete uh, delete breakpoint 2 and if i do info breakpoints then the breakpoint 2 is not there anymore all right okay so i i would like to still set that uh breakpoint so you can actually use a short version of many commands uh just by typing the first letter or first few letters of the command all right so if we look at uh, at the help page that i have created we can see the full commands break and also the the short version so there's break there's going to be ne next and step that we use continue run uh, list we can abbreviate as l and info as i okay so we use info breakpoints uh, so perhaps we can use just I B to see all the breakpoints that we have. All right. So let us create another breakpoint. So we want to create a breakpoint at line 13. And info breakpoints, we have two breakpoints, just as at the beginning. All right. So once we have that set up, we can run our program. So we can either run it or we can use the continue if let's say if i say continue then it says oh we haven't started the program okay so uh, then we need to run it okay. and it runs the program until it hits the breakpoint at line 13 which is in the main 
okay main function remember list in fact i can use l main line 13 is where it begins uh, the first um, now we can watch the variable for example i uh, let's see if i have a shortcut for it here uh, not in this last i guess but but we could uh, watch it uh, or we can just execute the code further on so we are at line 13 let's move on let's say step we are at line 14 let's say step we are line line 16 if i say step i'm going to step into the my function right or i can just continue uh all the way to the next breakpoint okay so it's continuing now it hit the breakpoint one all right we are at simple c line six a in my, fu my function okay so we can list uh, my function and see uh, more of the code we're at line six we are right here okay good so we can again we can do next or skip i, I mean step <clears throat> and we can step and we can step so what happens here we have moved to the next instruction a is a plus x we can move to the return and we can move to the end of the function so we're going to return from the function so if i'm saying step once again we are in the function my main now on line 18 all right now here's the the tricky bit if i say step now i'm going to step into the print function right but the print function is not part of our project. The print function is part of the library that's provided to us, the standard IO library, right? Um, so we cannot really debug it and we probably don't want to debug. We just, it, we just assume that it's fine, right? So I didn't really want to step into it. I would rather step out of it. Uh, I mean, I could go it, you know, step by step in print function. And some things will happen I, uh, without my understanding what's going on. So instead, I'm, I'm just going to go. Uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, say continue. And the program will run all the way till the end of it. Because after the print, it printed the result. See, it printed down. There was nothing there. All right. But let me run it once uh, once again. So let me do run the program. Now it's our at our first breakpoint in in the main function. So let's say I want to to step once again, step again. So now the next call is going to be calling the rest my function. Okay. I could jump over it. I could just call it, but stop after it has returned, right? So for that, I would use next command, right? So however, there is a breakpoint within that function, and that's why we stopped within that function, okay? So let me just uh, step through that function until we return from it. So we uh, have returned. Now I'm at the print function. And remember last time I was stepping into it and I wasn't too happy. So let's step over it. Let's do next. And now it called that function. The result is printing these values. And it's at the next line of the code, which is print done. Okay. So using next, we can call the functions without debugging into them, without stepping into them. So that is convenient when we're using the library functions or our own functions that do not have to be followed through, right? Especially if you have an iteration of one million times, you don't want to iterate step, 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 one million times through it. You'd much rather jump to the next breakpoint. Okay, so I'm going to continue to the end and, and that's it. So that part, I hope, is clear. That's how we can step through through a program until something bad happens. Uh, nothing bad happens in this program. Um, what we could do, 
I could introduce an error, I suppose, I don't know, uh, sample.c, uh, I could, uh, what would be a bad thing to do in a program? Um, let's say, maybe I could try divide by zero. Let's see if that's going to create a problem. Um, and probably the compiler is going to notice that. Okay, but let's let's try it. Minus g uh, simple dot c minus output is simple. And yes, the compiler just warned that hey, there is division by zero. Are you sure you really want to do it? Let's say I'm stupid enough to say that. Ah, who cares? I mean, let's do it anyway. And and let's let's try to run gdb new debugger all right uh simple it loaded the function uh, okay so let's try to run it what if i run it the program received sig sig fp arithmetic exception so apparently something went wrong with the program but luckily we see where exactly the problem was okay so it has run until this point and we can see okay apparently this is where the problem is or we could <coughs> we could uh, you know inspect for example look at all the registers inspect or info registers okay and this will show us all the register values that are there for this architecture right and you'll notice that they have we have the registers ax bx cx dx si di and so on we have the segment registers here so these registers are specific for the x86 architecture which is not the architecture that we are learning in this course um, however that's the architecture that that uh, most of our desktops are running on um, even though nowadays if you're running mac uh, os on the newer mac laptops that are using the arm architecture you may have a different picture there but anyway this is how we could look at certain registers what we really want to work on we want to work on a cross compiled arm program right so that's what we're gonna do next okay i'm gonna quit the debugger here and it says that uh, there's a process that was stopped it's going to be killed are you sure you want to do this yes i don't want to debug any further so i'm gonna say yes right and i'm gonna move up to the directory where i have another project with another program uh, called lab.c and this function is very similar to the simple function except it's calling my function that is defined in the assembly right so we have the myfun.s cat myfun.s and this is assembly function it does the same thing it adds two registers together the same registers r0 and r0 saves the result in r0 and that's what it's going to return so since you did the homework you should know by now uh, that the result is being returned in the r0 register always all right, so this is our uh, assembly function, simple as that. We are gonna call it uh, from the C function right here, and we're gonna print the result. So idea is the same for the program, except it's in implemented using assembly, and, and, and we need to compile C program and assembly program to do that. I have a make file for that, okay, so uh, here's the make file that does all the uh, grunt work for me. It even can run the test command, which you, I'm not going to use that much. I'm rather going to use the <coughs> all target that's going to compile and link all that's needed. And it's going to compile using the G minus G option once again. So that's pretty important so that the debug information is being saved here. All right. So let's go. Let's make make all it does the compilation and it links the function together so now the function is good to go we could just uh, uh, run it by make test and it does the same thing it seems to run just fine but how do we run the same pro program uh, using 
you know, GDB. Because right now, we need to run it using the emulator. So we are going to use the virtual machine, the Quemu, to run it. And we need to use GDB to connect to that emulator. So there are two things. We're going to use GDB uh, multi-arch version of the program. That's one thing. And the other thing is we're going to actually use from these notes a certain port to communicate between the Quemu and GDB. So those are going to be two programs. One is going to be the virtual machine. The other is going to be the GNU debugger. And the GNU debugger is going to give it the commands like run one step, run one instruction, what's in the registers. And the virtual machine is going to do all that for us and going to respond with, with the information as requested. That's the plan. How do we implement that plan? So let's look at the uh, the plan here. So first we need to start the emulator and specify the port. Okay. Uh, we're going to do that using this command. All right. Okay. And I could use, so I'm going to clean that. I could use the same port here, one, two, three, four, five, that I had in the example. So that I need to follow by the name of the program, which is lab. Okay. So, it was, we can see here that it was compiled to be uh, the program with the name lab. And after that, what I'm going to do, I can specify the ampersand. So in the example, we also have 10 here. So we could have extra parameters for our program. Uh, but in this case, we don't have any arguments to pass to. So we're going to skip that. So ampersand means that we're going to run this program and we're going to let it run in the background. Okay, so it's going to running if I'm pressing enter. Now the program is running. It showed me actually here that that's the process identification for the program. I could just say PS and see that Quemu arm is running in the background with this ID. And it's waiting. It's waiting on the port 12345 for anyone to talk to it. All right. So let's talk to it. Let's go to the next step according to this <clears throat> uh, a plan. We're going to use the GDB multi arc. Okay. GDB multi arc. And we're going to use it again with the program name. I'm going to use the quiet version. And I'm going to use the program name, which is lab. It's the same program, right? And if I'm trying to run it now, it's not going to be able to run. It's going to fail, right? If I say run, uh, it's going to complain, hey, can't insert breakpoint, cannot access address, blah, blah, blah. So the reason being is that the program is compiled for a different architecture. So we're trying to do a wrong thing here, right? See, selected architecture ARM 5 is not compatible with the reported target architecture this so this is not the way to do it so let's try to do it again so i'm gonna quit this uh, remember i did start this quemo so it is still there up and running okay ps let's check it okay let me start the gdb once again except now i'm gonna issue a command target remote local has host one two three four five okay so what does it mean so the command target means telling gdb what is where is the target that we want to debug um so the next thing is remote we're telling that the target is actually going to be remote it's not going to be on this architecture but this remote target is still going to be on this computer. So that, that's why I'm going to say localhost. Localhost. Okay. And I need to specify the port so that the GDB knows which port to talk to. Localhost 12345 is what I selected. And enter. So it says, oh, okay, we have the localhost. Uh, it complains that it will not be able to debug the shared libraries, which is fine. We just want to debug our own code. <clears throat> All right. 
Now, you might ask, why did we use multi-arc versus the simple GDB? Because the multi-arc is like the front end for the GDB that can work with any architecture. Uh, it has the same commands, basically. And it, it knows how to communicate to, let's say, to Quemu or to other machines, uh, to any architecture, basically. All right, so once we are here, what can we do? We could, <coughs> we could list the code. So this is our main function. We can list the my function, which actually is assembly function. See, it, it figured that it figured it out. It figured it out that it needs to look into assembly code. Uh, we could set breakpoints. Let me set a breakpoint to to we could set the breakpoints to our functions. So my function. Let me set a breakpoint to my function. Okay. And we can also set breakpoints at certain files. Set breakpoint to to lab C line seven as before okay and now if i say info breakpoints <coughs> then i see all this information here now we have two breakpoints in two different files in the lab c and in my fun s uh, turns out to be the same line number seven and seven that's just a coincidence here once we have that we can run the program so let's say run and it says that remote target does not support run command. However, we can use the continue command. So that's what we're going to do. Continue. And it's going to run now until it hits the breakpoint. The first breakpoint it hits is in the main program. Okay, so we can list main to, <coughs> to see it better. We are on the line seven in the main here. So that's what we are here seeing here now we could look at the registers info registers remember and it shows us a lot of registers all of them are arm registers r0 till r12 the sp link register pc those we know even the cpsr that is what we know <coughs> turns out there are a bunch of other registers for floating point for other purposes right and even more right registers but we're not too interested in those we can actually ask for a specific register right so i could say info about register zero it's not gonna stand, understand that because there are a, a lot of info commands <clears throat> by the way you can use help help info is gonna show you all kinds of things that you can ask information about. <coughs> so let's ask about registers. Okay, so info registers R0. And now it shows us only the value for the R0. We can ask info registers R0, R1, and it will show us two registers. All right. Where are we in the code? So that's that's not what, what where we are. We are in. Uh, <clears throat> let's just step ahead. We are in the main program, but let's step. So we're stepping. We're in the main program, I believe. It's the main. Right. We are on the line eight here. We're assigning zero to the rest. Again, we could ask for uh, for values for the registers, but the registers don't make much sense right now because we're looking at a C program and we don't really know how it was compiled. So let's just run everything till we hit the breakpoint. Remember, uh, we have two breakpoints set and one of them is in my function. Okay. Um, so let's continue until we hit the breakpoint in the assembly code. Okay. And if you, and right now we are at the command add register R0. So let's check what the uh, R0 value is before we run it. So the value is seven. Okay. So let's step 
into this command. The command is being run. <clears throat> Let's double check what the value for the register is now. And the value is 14. So it was added to itself and saved to the same register. So that makes sense. So it seems like everything is fine. So let's keep on running. Uh, let's step. And now we are at the main program. We returned from the assembly program using this instruction. We're in the C program, uh, the printf. And remember, I didn't want to go into the printf and debug it. I just want to step over it. So I can say next here. So it prints that the result is 14, as expected. Very nice. And then there is this printf. Done. Let's skip over it. It's also done. Let's skip next. We're at, at the end of the main program. Let's skip next. So we are somewhere else, right? <clears throat> And if you step outside the main program, basically you step into the realm of, of the whoever loaded our program into the memory, right? And if you are natively debugging, you may see some, some, something interesting there. Uh, if you are debugging in, in Quemo, it just tells us that it cannot find bounds for the current function anymore because we're, we are outside it anyway, right? But we're done with running this program. We have executed it step by step we run up to a certain breakpoint we were able to monitor the values of the registers of them changing so those are the kind of simple things that you can do with basic commands using the debugger if you want to do more things um, beyond these basic commands uh, there's a lot of useful information then i invite you to look at a couple of the tutorials first maybe and then you can even go and, and go through the manual. If we look at the commands in short from the PS, <clears throat> um, then there's a lot of useful commands, right? Delete, delete all breakpoints or delete one breakpoint, uh, delete clear breakpoints at the function. Uh, you could turn the breakpoints on and off by just disabling them and so on right there's a lot of commands but the thing is you don't need to know them all in order to work to use the bugger i just showed you the simple basic things and i hope that is going to be useful so that's all for this lab thanks for watching